Welcome, this is what is happening on the Sun today, the 22nd of September 2011. And we have a lot going on. Two monster spots have appeared over the northeast limb. That was the region that produced the M flare yesterday, and as I prepare this, it's just produced an X flare. But before we get into all of that, the trivia question. The background image here is of three galaxies colliding. Our galaxy is heading for a collision with another galaxy. So the first part of the trivia question, the easy part, is what galaxy we're going to collide with. Then it gets more difficult. Secondly, when was that collision likely to occur? And thirdly, given that both galaxies contain about half a trillion stars, about how many collisions between stars of the two different galaxies do we expect? Less than one? One? A hundred? A thousand? Or over a million? The answer will be given at the end. I have some very good news. Helio Viewer is back online. However, some of the databases have yet to be updated, particularly the Soho Lasco data and the Stereo data, but that will happen relatively soon. Apparently the problem with the Helio Viewer is that the server that ran it broke down and had to be sent away to New England for repairs. Unfortunately the repair shop was first hit by Hurricane Areen and it's very difficult to fix electronics when you don't have any electricity. And secondly by Tropical Storm Lee. The repaired server revived back at NASA on Monday and is now back online. So go enjoy making your own movies on with Helio Viewer once again. So to test out its functionality, I made the following three movies of the M-Flare from yesterday. First the Helium 304 from the AIA instrument on SDO shows a beautiful set of loops forming during the flare um, at about 1200 yesterday. The flare is less spectacular in the Iron 9 line at 171 angstroms, which corresponds to about 600,000 degrees Kelvin. But you can still see the same sorts of loop structures forming uh, just behind the northeast limb. I would like to point out this huge arch that joins the new region coming over the northeast limb with region 1301. Finally, we'll take a look at the Iron 21 line at 131 angstroms, which is equivalent to about 10 megakelvin. This is the hottest line that the AIA instrument possesses and shows strictly flare plasma. Quite spectacular, and this is only an M1 flare. I'm so glad that Helio Viewer is back again. Serial B spacecraft had a clear view of this flare near Sun Center. In the Iron 12 195 Angstrom line, which corresponds to about a million degrees, you can see the, the extent and size of the flare, most of which was probably behind our east limb. From the GOES X-ray plot, you can see that the parade of sea flares has continued, but punctuated at the end here with an X1 flare. The first indication I got from it was from the EVE instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, which showed this rather remarkable picture in ultraviolet of the flare. So we can see that it is associated with the region on the limb. Let's take a look at the individual active regions and see what's been going on with each one of them. We lost region 1300 over the west limb overnight, and region 1298 died. So that leaves us with four numbered regions, plus three unnumbered regions. Sorry, the caption's wrong here. Anyway, so let's start with region 1295 in the northwest. It seems that region 1295 has grown quite significantly in the last 24 hours, particularly in the leading part of the region. It's also produced five sea flares, which is also an indication of dynamic change. Next is region 1296, which is just behind region 1295 to the east. It seems to have decayed significantly overnight, and if it continues that trend, it probably won't be around for much longer. Next, region 1301 in the northeast. That seems to have grown a little bit overnight, however, we have to be a little careful here because again foreshortening may be making the region appear to grow. It has produced one C flare. However, NOAA attributed yesterday's M flare to this region, which as we've seen is a mistake. However, coming up behind it is a huge region. Two large spots are clearly visible already, and I think there's more to come. This region has produced five C flares and one M flare, and now an X flare. Sorry again, the caption is inaccurate because I produced it before the X flare started. So this is a very, very active region and I expect there will be more activity like it in the coming days. This is probably the largest region of this cycle so far and probably for the last six to eight years. Last but not least, we have region 1299 in the southwest. This region too has seemed to have uh, decayed quite significantly overnight and I suspect will not be here tomorrow. Now the three unnumbered regions, of course there's the one on the northeast limb that we've already talked about, but there are two very small regions 
one in the northwest and one in the southeast. These are both very small single spot regions. However, the one in the southeast has hung in there for more than a day and may be growing slightly. So it's worth keeping an eye on. So let's take a look at the continuous evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours. Given that the new region coming over the northeast limb is so close to the limb it, you can't be able to see very much, I would focus on region 1301 which seems to have shown the most growth and change in the last day. Unfortunately the X-flare is too recent to show very clearly on the AIA instrument so we'll have to take a look at that in detail tomorrow. Anyway I've included here the Helium 2304 movie which corresponds to about 50,000 degrees. The Iron 9 171 Angstrom uh, movie which corresponds to about 600,000 degrees. And the Iron 21 movie which corresponds to about 10 million degrees. I had hoped to show you the latest image from the GOES X-ray imager however uh, for some reason they seem to be having technical problems and are stuck about three or four hours ago. Well we should expect a fairly major coronal mass ejection from this X1 flare. However I was quite surprised to see that the biggest coronal mass ejection is off the west limb not the east limb. That would seem to be a partial halo event and may be geo effective. The solar wind data from ACE shows that we might have been hit with another small coronal mass ejection. If you look at the curve at the top in red which is BZ, the vertical component of the solar wind's magnetic field, it switched from south to north suddenly. That corresponded to a drop in the overall density of the solar wind while the velocity increased along with the temperature. Going along with that there was a sharp drop in the high energy electron flux and we may have had a small proton event associated with that M flare yesterday. No sign of anything from the X flare as yet. The auroral zone uh, looks relatively quiet and the KP index very much like yesterday is varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then the X-ray background has remained at the C1 level. Sunspot numbers increased slightly to 108. Radio sun intensity has remained at 144 solar flux units. Solar wind speed is at 365 kilometers per second but with a density very much less than one proton per cubic centimeter and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are certain, M flares are likely, X flares are likely. That's the highest rating for that I've ever given. The sunspot number should remain high, coronal mass ejections remain likely, the solar wind speed should remain low, and a geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is unlikely. From the composite coronal image we see that we have no major regions due back over the east limb after this one has cleared for a couple of days. If you would like to find out more about what's happening on the sun follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see some earlier editions of the sun today or some of my other videos go to my channel they're all listed there. If you want to keep abreast of what's going on on the sun please subscribe you are more than welcome to do so. As for our trivia questions what galaxy are we going to be colliding with? That would be the Andromeda galaxy and it will happen between 3 and 5 billion years from now. And the chances of a collision between a star in the Andromeda galaxy and one in our galaxy is almost zero. So the correct answer is less than one. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.